Hello, everybody. I'm Graham Neal, and I'm editor of Smart Cities World. Delighted that you've joined us today to discuss the increasing importance of interoperability within the smart city space. Recent years have seen an explosion of connected devices in a welter of sectors, whether it's within the management of essential services, promoting inclusion, or helping deal with climate change, to name only a few such examples. However, data's true potential and true value can only be unlocked within open, interoperable, and integrated networks. The emergence of the open standard six low pan enables urban networks to work together sharing data, and turbocharging the potential of smart cities. To discuss this, I'm delighted to be joined by Gitano Calabro, CTO at Paradox Engineering, and Pablo Arbelea Arbelea, Associate Professor and Holder of the Gijon Smart Cities Chair at the University of Oviedo. We'll be holding a Q&A session following the presentation. Please submit any questions that you have using Zoom software and we'll hopefully get to them. First, Gitano, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to this uh, webinar that is dedicated to the topic of interoperability inside smart city. Uh, are you able to, um, I think the, this is the first slide. Um, now I will share. Okay, my name is Gaetano Calabro and I'm the CTO of Paradox Engineering. And uh, this is a short presentation about the six low pan protocol. It's a little bit technical, but I, anyway, I try to leave the argument not at a very deep level, but a very high level in order to share the, the most important uh, information about the protocol um, and uh, just to understand why uh, six low pan is a really a game changer in the context of uh, open city. This is um, the argument of the, the presentation. Okay, the next, uh, the first slide um, uh, is uh, just uh, related to uh, introduction the, because now uh, we, are, we are talking about city. In a city there are so many public services to take care of but managing those services one by one at complexity and cost while burdening uh, innovation. Uh, it is necessary to have a scalable and interoperable network to allow city uh, to host and control any urban uh, application over the same infrastructure. For this reason, the infrastructure must uh, be a unique infrastructure that must be effective, uh, scalable, adaptive, uh, powerful, secure, and uh, for sure open. This is really important. And uh, in this slide, I, this slide, I want to just uh, introduce uh, Six Low Pan. Uh, there are also the logo, the official logo of Six Low Pan, and the, the definition of Six Low Pan. Six Low Pan is IPv6 over low wireless personal area network. Uh, the standard is de defined by the IETF. The IETF is the Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, and uh, is uh, one of the body that define many of the open standard uh, used on the internet, such as uh, UDP, TCP, and also HTTP, used every day on our browser. Then it's an, an important standard. And uh, uh, IPv6 uh, allow IPv6, um, uh, six Lopan allow IPv6 packet to be carried efficiently with the small link layer frame because uh, in any case, uh, we are talking about uh, small devices with the reduced performance in terms of potentiality, especially hardware and also software capability of the terminal. Uh, originally, the, the protocol was um, uh, conceived to support um, 802.15.4 low power wireless network. In the origin, uh, this is working in the 2.4 gigahertz band, but now there are a variety of new uh, media uh, starting from sub one gigahertz low power RF and uh, also recently uh, Bluetooth uh, power line communication and uh, low power Wi Fi. Then uh, uh, Sex Lopan is uh, really a wide adoption on many, many different physical layers 
And this is really necessary to facilitate open standard interoperability and is ideal for a smart city application. Okay, now I just uh, um, highlight uh, some feature of the standard because uh, this is necessary just to better understand the function division of the different layer. Uh, with the light blue color, I highlighted uh, the most common configuration of the stack, which is follow the ISO OSI model, uh, starting from physical layer up to application layer. Then just a very quick introduction, layer by layer, just to go, just to have a, a clear picture, what is six Lopin? Starting from physical layer, uh, the physical layer in this case, in most of the cases, is uh, IEEE 802.15.4G. This is a um, um, uh, physical layer related to RF communication. Mm, there are many frequency band, but the most suitable for outdoor application are the frequency band below one gigahertz, because the 2.4 gigahertz is very cloudy band, and there are a lot of devices. And the urban inside the urban environment now is really hard to communicate using 2.4 because there is a lot of interference. Consider Bluetooth, uh, audio video sender, there is a lot of devices operating in 2.4. Then for uh, outdoor application, um, sub gigahertz uh, is uh, really the best frequency band. And uh, in Europe, uh, this is 868 megahertz. Uh, in uh, US, uh, 915. And in Japan, 920. And also in this many Asian countries, 920 megahertz. The, there are other physical layers, as I mentioned before, uh, like uh, Wi-Fi, power line, also BLE, and many other are following in this list. After that, uh, there are the after the physical layer, following the ISO model, there is the link layer. Link layer um, is a, a layer dedicated to detecting also in a physical layer during transmission and uh, receive. The data link uh, is normally also the, the MAC layer. The MAC layer provide, pro provide the rules to access the physical media. Then there are some uh, um, physical layers related to Wi-Fi, PLC, BLE, but in this case, we are talking about 802.15.4 that define the MAC layer and the rules to use the physical layer. OK, going up, uh, this is the first uh, six Lopan word that we found inside the stack, uh, because in reality, this is uh, an adaptation layer, an adaptation layer in order to provide adaptation from IPv6 to IEEE 802.15.4 in most of the cases. Um, there are um, some uh, uh, header identifier inside this uh, uh, layer and also compression of, of uh, IPv6 and the UDP headers. This is necessary in order to allow the IPv6 to be forwarded inside a, a small network like the, 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 the sub gigahertz network or reduced functionality terminals. Another important um, uh, function of the adaptation layer is to uh, do a fragmentation, assembly, and reassembly of the packet. Because considering the MTU, the, the, the size of the frame of a normal IPv6 packet is around uh, is, um, 1,280 uh, bytes, then is long. Uh, and uh, uh, this adaptation try to split the packet in order to use the maximum payload of the link layer that in this case is 127 uh, bytes. Then uh, it's necessary to fragment the packet in many different packets in order to forward a transparent frame IPv6 over, over the network. OK, the, the layer number three is the network layer is a um, very important layer because uh, um, there are some uh, um, uh, protocol related to this layer. Uh, for sure, this is related to the, to the routing. And there are many, many type of routing available, but the most used is uh, RPL. RPL, um, the, in most of the cases, is named Ripple. 
The RPL routing is um, uh, responsible to route the packet inside the network. There are also additional services like uh, IPv6 rules, also ICMP version 6 uh, as de defined by the IETF uh, um, body. The layer on top, in this case, there are two possible choice. One is the user datagram protocol, UDP. It is a simple, effective, uh, provide a non-guarantee packet delivery and duplicate protection services because uh, UDP is a connectionless protocol. Connectionless means that the protocol don't take care of connection, just send packet. This is really um, a good protocol in order to simplify the transmission of packet over the network, especially in lossy network uh, like the radio. Radio network means uh, it's possible to lose some packet during the transmission and the UDP take care in a best way. UDP is a little bit, uh, TCP is a little bit more complex because provide guarantee packet delivery services because it's a connection oriented protocol. But there are some drawback because uh, the is difficult to manage in a very constrained device uh, like you know, in a normal um, a mesh network. Then in most of the cases, uh, the, 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 the transport layer is the UDP. At the end, just uh, final, uh, this is the application layer. Application layer, most common protocol are uh, co-op and HTTP. Uh, we know it's HTTP, uh, co-op is a, like a light version of a simplified version of a HTTP, uh, especially suited for uh, hardware with limited resources like uh, power sensor uh, or uh, devices like uh, uh, lamp control, small sensor and so on. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, co-op is used as a defined protocol over UDP and uh, we are following this in, in, in indication uh, because uh, now is the most used protocol inside the uh, wireless network and also inside the, the six low pan. It's not really part of six low pan stack, but I just mentioned the application layer because it's important to understand the full chain starting from the physical layer up to the application layer. Okay, next one um, is just uh, the routing uh, because there are two different methods uh, for uh, the routing. It's possible uh, to route the packet in two different ways. One is called uh, root over uh, in which um, work at level three. And uh, um, the second one is the mesh under is a mechanism that is used at the level two to use the, the addressing of the 802.15.4 standard. The, um, um, the advantage of a uh, um, root over is that uh, is a very, uh, is a exactly the same mechanism used for any IP networks. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in such a way, each node uh, represents an IP router. Then a packet from source, for example, can travel uh, intermediate router like this one. And this one is just uh, uh, transported and routed at layer three. And the packet starting from the application, from the source, uh, um, can uh, uh, pass through many nodes and at the end there is the destination and the destination recognizes the address and the packet is delivered to the final destination. The same uh, occurs also in mesh under, but in this case is, a, is not really following the standard. And then the best foundation for larger scalable network and improved performance is to follow the IP standard because now we are talking about interoperability and the IP uh, demonstrated that it is a really interoperable protocol. And for this reason, 6 Lopan is very good because uh, follow the IP indication and also root over mechanism transport data from source to destination just following the IP rules. Okay. This, um, Slide uh, show a typical configuration of three connection in a six lopan network. Uh, the light green node, this one, um, 
is the, the reduced functional node are normally end node. In this case are, uh, uh, for example, battery powered node. In many applications, we have a battery power node in order to have a long uh, lifetime <coughs> without need to connect to the, to, to the main just using battery. In this case, the link is not always on, but the node transmits information just when it's needed. For example, if this is a temperature send sensor, uh, the sensor send time over time some data in the network, uh, just establishing a local connection with a routing node. The dark green is a, a router node. A router node is different from a reduced functionality node because it's a full function node that implement the, uh, the routing protocol able to establish connection between different nodes. And the routing protocol is also responsible to find the best route from one node to another node. Considering the routing protocol dynamically change the, the route, considering the environmental uh, performances because uh, in most of the cases we are using uh, uh, radio connectivity. There uh, can be some interference, for example, one, uh, one route um, can be not usable over the time and the system automatically f f found uh, an alternative routing in order to route the packet from source to destination. The connection between nodes are then uh, dynamically uh, chosen by the, 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 the routing protocol. The IPv6 are um, just following the, the, the rules of IP network. Then the packet uh, just send from uh, the, the, the source to destination considering the, the IPv6 address. IPv6 can be locally like in this case, uh, we have two nodes that must be must communicate together. For example, one sensor, one actuator, exchange data, and uh, uh, this is the source, this is the, the destination of vice versa. And uh, this is uh, just possible because uh, each node has a unique PVC address. The address can be locally or also remote. For example, different server can be connected to the edge router, to the, to the mesh network, and the end-to-end -end connectivity allows the packet to be delivered inside the network in a transparent way, just following the IP rules. Then not only local communication, but also remote communication from different hosts in the network and different, different server. This is very important because local connectivity allows fast reaction to event. Consider movement, uh, movement sensor that must uh, uh, change the dynamically the, the lighting level of a node, then the local communication allow a fast reaction to this event, and also communication with uh, different uh, hosts in the network uh, and allow remote control of the system. This is very important, and the IPv6 allow us to be completely transparent and following the IP rules. Another important um, point is related to security. Security is a must in, a, in, in, the, in the network and time over time is uh, more and more important and uh, security also uh, imply some rules uh, at uh, link layer and also transport layer. Um, for example, at the link layer, we have some uh, encryption. The AAS 128 uh, is uh, the encryption uh, defined by, by IEEE 802.15.4. But in addition to this, at uh, transport layer, there are additional security protocol, like for example, TLS or DTLS. In, uh, in our case, I um, show that um, we are using UDP and then the, 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 the transport layer security defined by the standard is the DTLS. This is necessary to have a strong authentication and encryption, not only encryption, but also authentication, because uh, this is necessary to prevent uh, untrusted node from joining a trusted six slope and network in order to avoid problem with the not trusted node and vice versa also untrusted node from joining uh, a trusted node uh, is prevented to join an untrusted six slope and network like phishing for example this is very important and allow secure communication and prevent any unauthorized data transmission 
And now we are talking about uh, interoperability, the road uh, toward, toward the, the full interoperability, because uh, interoperability is the ability for uh, devices from different manufacturers to exchange data. Uh, there are many alliances that are working on, uh, but consider uh, real inter interoperability is not only interoperability at the network level, but also at the application layer. In case uh, we need really a full end-to-end -end interoperability. And uh, considering uh, the, um, the six low pan protocol uh, and uh, the, also the different uh, body that are trying to standardize the, the, the system, interoperability is not, uh, is not simple because the standard leave many choice to the implementation in order to be, to be flexible and suitable for a different application. These um, geopardides are really true interoperability. And uh, for this reason, there are many, many movement around this argument. For example, uh, uh, we are participating now to um, uh, um, uh, group of uh, uh, an, uh, an alliance of company that are working with UCFI. UCFI is a, is, a, is a group that uh, um, uh, try to standardize uh, the, the, the system, not only at network level, but also at the application level, just to uh, give us an high degree of uh, interoperability among uh, IPv6 and uh, uh, a full end-to-end -end interoperability. In this case, for example, uh, uh, UCFI are um, uh, now working in order to define uh, um, all the single uh, configuration rules starting from physical level up to application level in order to allow really a, a multi-device uh, interoperability. Inside one network, uh, many different vendors can uh, put device, uh, imagine a lighting network, uh, one node is from company A, another node from company B, and following UCFI, uh, it is possible to establish communication with a, an application server in a transparent way, just because uh, it's not only uh, the standard related to network and transport of the data, but the standard also is related to the data model. This is really important for smart city and also to enable city to be really open and interoperable. Okay. Uh, just very <laughs> fast, let's summarize uh, some uh, key uh, performance of six low pan about uh, addressing uh, uh, six low pan guarantee complete interoperability because uh, adopt all the uh, internet oriented application and standard. We talk about this is a multi-op uh, protocol based on 802.15.4G. Uh, the version G is related to the physical layer. And uh, about uh, radio performance, considering uh, the, 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 the distance can be starting from 100 uh, meter up to two kilometer, depends on region and power, because uh, many different regulations allow different transmission power. And we must follow the, the regulation from CE, ETSI, FCC. And this is, necessary. this is good because uh, we can establish very large mesh network with dynamic uh, communication and also the path can be dynamically because the routing protocol are able to make a choice and uh, use the best link in order to deliver the packet from source to, to destination. The modulation is um, simple because it's a GFSK modulation, very robust uh, and uh, allows to um, send data at rate from uh, 50 up to 200 kilobit per second. This is configurable and depends also on, uh, on different region, uh, depends on uh, channel width and, 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 and so on. The channel spacing uh, uh, can be normally 200 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz, depends on uh, on uh, specification and uh, in uh, Hetsi, for example, the normally the bandwidth, the channel spacing is around 200 kilohertz and uh, 400 kilohertz in ARIB used in, uh, in uh, Japan. About latency, uh, this is the, the 130 millisecond is the normal latency per single hop. 
the system, the latency is not, in, is not so large and then uh, near uh, real-time application can be used inside the network in order to fast react to some event and uh, the system uh, root the packet hop by hop uh, and the, the final latency depends on how many hop uh, the system uh, are uh, um, uh, pass in order to reach from source to, to destination. The frequency band we also mentioned is uh, many frequency band, essentially sub gigahertz uh, because this is really good for uh, for um, uh, reliable connectivity in a urban environment. And for this reason, sub gigahertz is better than 2.4. Uh, about the low power, uh, the system uh, natively is designed to be power efficient. And uh, the system also uh, NA allows some low power functionality like the, 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 the um, uh, reduced function node that can be powered by battery and connected the network just when it's necessary to exchange data. And the, most of the time, the, the, the nodes are in a sleep mode without uh, power consumption or reducing really at minimum the power consumption. Just some timer are uh, uh, use it in order to switch on uh, again, or um, in most of the cases, there are some interrupt. In case there are a, there is an alarms, for example, the system automatically switch on and send data and go back in deep low power. And at the end, security. We talk uh, about security is uh, really important because uh, it's necessary to secure the connection and also load the node to not connect the untrusted network. Okay, just a uh, final resume of the key benefit of uh, six lopan because it is really uh, an, um, a protocol that can be used on a different physical layer, as I mentioned before. Also, most of the case uh, mesh network on Bluetooth now are using six lopan and there are many applications. The application inside smart city can be smart lighting, smart parking, uh, waste, uh, um, waste management, uh, environmental sensor, and many other smart city system. Uh, really uh, enable to have a very large mesh network to connect all the device inside, inside the system. It's based on standard because standard is really important. And um, first of all, the IP, because are following uh, really the standard that drive uh, the internet expansion during this year. And uh, also um, uh, there are many uh, group of uh, interest to standardize protocol. Uh, and in reality, for example, UCFI can be used in order to have a standard connection end to end from physical layer up to application layer. And for this case, in this case, uh, is no vendor dependent. Uh, another important uh, uh, possibility offered by uh, UCFI is to release in open source uh, the stack in order to allow different company to implement the system and assure interoperability with some uh, interoperability test. Then there are no vendor dependency in case uh, uh, all the vendor are following uh, um, a specific profile. And it's very, very scalable because uh, it is possible to connect uh, hundred and thousand on device in the same network. The only uh, attention is necessary to pay about uh, uh, latency. This is just depends on number of nodes uh, because in any case, the radio is a shared medium and it's necessary to define how many nodes can be connected inside the network, but there are no strong limitations because uh, uh, six lopen is based on an IP standard and is very scalable from this point of view. Okay, this is just uh, my last uh, slide. And uh, we, now I just uh, leave the microphone to the, to the other speaker. I try, it. I try to switch on my, my presentation and there are, in case uh, there are some questions, there is a question time at the end of the, of the webinar. Sorry.
Thank you very much, uh, Gaetano. Uh, I'm going to, st uh, to start my, my presentation right now. Let me, let me share the screen. Okay, I think that uh, it is uh, working right now. So um, let's start. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Pablo Arbolella. I'm an associate professor at the University of Oviedo and holder of the Smart Cities Chair funded by the city of Gijón. Well, uh, the University of Oviedo is the, the main research institution in our region, Asturias, in the north of Spain. We're located in the, in the north coast of uh, Spain, to be uh, more, more specific. Um, the whole region has around one million of inhabitants. The, the University of Oviedo is an institution with more than 400 years of history and it has several campuses in the region and uh, in the city of Gijón we have the biggest one related with engineering. In the slide you can see in the top a general view of the beautiful uh, city of Gijón with around 270,000 uh, um, inhabitants. Okay. Uh, also, the, the region was traditionally based uh, its economy on mining and other types of heavy industry, but the city of Gijón has uh, been committed for, for many years and, and continuously to a business development model based on technological based companies. As a result of this uh, effort, we have the most important cluster in the region, uh, what we call a mile of knowledge. Um, it is represented in the image of the bottom left. This space contains more than 170 technological companies uh, with uh, more than uh, 4,000 workers and a total annual turnover of more than 1.7 billion, billion euros, okay? Uh, our engineering campus is integrated in this space, uh, making very easy the interaction between the companies and research uh, groups inside the university. Since uh, 2015, the, the city of Gijón uh, has further strengthened the relationship between the public administration and the university and local business ecosystem with the creation and funding of uh, three chairs that promote uh, research uh, and cooperation in the fields of uh, tourism and sustainability, uh, design and technology, and in the case um, of the chair that I'm holding is uh, Smart Cities, okay? Allow me uh, not to go uh, in a very technical details in this presentation and focus in explaining uh, the Smart Cities model defined by Gijón uh, by and what uh, Six Low Pound has to do with it. So um, I would like to describe the, the basic uh, eight actions that uh, uh, the city of Gijón took uh, related with IoT uh, networks and emphasize the collaboration, the collaboration ecosystem that exists between the city, uh, the university and the, the industry. So uh, Gijón has opted uh, for uh, the development of its own uh, city IoT infrastructure. Uh, promoting a public uh, managed model uh, that uh, will allow the development of applications and services at city level developed by the city of Gijón, but also the use of the IoT infrastructure by, by third parties. Uh, this model has been developed uh, about all uh, thinking uh, of the interaction of the local and regional technolo te technological companies. The, the idea uh, of the government of the city is that these companies can develop their own solution on this infrastructure and then export them to other cities with similar infrastructure. Okay. 
Um, uh, for the development of this uh, infrastructure, the, the six low pump protocol has been selected for many reasons. I'm, I'm not an expert in communication and my field of expertise is related basically with energy management and smart grids, okay? But it is true that right now, uh, with the eruption of the so-called energy internet, uh, even the power system is in engineers like, like me, uh, we need to interact with IoT devices and communication protocols all the time. In short term, the number of devices that we're going to have uh, connected to the to the uh, network is going to increase drastically. So it makes sense to use an, an IPv6 uh, protocol. And we have to consider that many of these uh, devices are going to be low power devices with a very limited processing capabilities, okay? Uh, considering this, I think that the selection of uh, the six low pump uh, protocol is a good option. It uses uh, open IP standards, end-to-end -end IP addressable nodes. Uh, we can create a self-healing, uh, measured, uh, robust, uh, and scalable, and interoperable uh, networks, okay? Well, uh, as uh, Gaetano mentioned before, it is true that one of the main problems recognized by all experts related with um, six low pan networks has been the lack of standardization in the data formatting. Uh, this feature it could be without any doubt an important drawback uh, for interoperability when adopting these kind of solutions. Uh, however, uh, associations and alliances like uh, UCFI are already working in the development of the standardized data models and data payloads that uh, any agent can use freely, reducing drastically the vendors dependent and increasing the interoperability of the smart cities applications. Well, um, let me go uh, very fast in this presentation through the action made by the city of Gijón. Some of them include collaboration with the Smart Cities Chair at the university in order to implement a solid and robust uh, ecosystem to implement the IoT infrastructure. 2017, uh, Gijón City Council took the advantage of uh, the change in, in, in public light, lighting to deploy its uh, intelligent public roads strategy with the aim of uh, improving energy efficiency and uh, deploying an IoT network at the same time. This deployment was labeled uh, with the name of uh, Gijón City Lab project. Uh, it was a pilot project comprising uh, 1,150 lighting points and IoT nodes installed in three areas around uh, Paseo de Begoña, the synthetic and technological part, and also another zone, zone called Intra. These zones uh, can be observed in the image in the in the top of the slide. Okay, uh, the nodes installed were of course uh, six low pan nodes uh, with a digital and analog uh, input to control and monitor uh, LED lamps uh, drawn by I think uh, uh, Dali protocol. Um, uh, from the platform developed uh, that can be observed in the bottom image, uh, we were able to locate, interrogate, switch off and on and devices and make also a uh, timing. Okay, next step. Next step was a uh, Gijonin project. Gijonin project is a very ambitious project founded by the European Commission and the Ministry of Economy of Spain and the City Council of Gijon. Uh, it is implementing not only technical things uh, based in IoT networks, but uh, an integrated management system of the city. Uh, and it's a municipal term. For, uh, for that, an integrated smart city model has been designed and the total budget of, the, of this project was around 6 million euros, okay? The main char characteristics of the smart cities model is that it must be scalable, flexible, secure, interoperable, open, reusable, and closed platform. The project is right now under development and it has uh, several different components integrated in five different fields. Smart uh, government, smart mobility, uh, participation of the citizens, uh, digitalization and sustainability. And inside, uh, inside uh, sustainability, we have the component uh, C4, C5 and C6 that are respectively, uh, respectively um, IoT infrastructure uh, and smart lighting, air quality management and smart buildings management. In the right, right uh, part of the slide, we can observe the, the partner uh, map of the project and among them, uh, we can see many, many uh, local companies. Well, other initiatives uh, done uh, in collaboration with the city of Gijón, for instance, uh, the demo spaces uh, like the one uh, uh, called Conecta Gijón. Connect a Gijón initiative uh, was launched in December uh, 2019 and its main objective was to show the citizens examples of application of IoT technology um, uh, deployed in the city. 
To this end, uh, the following applications were installed in the vicinity of the Begonia Park uh, in the city center, and they were controlled uh, by means of a mobile application developed by also by Gijón Smart Cities Chair, uh, uh, available for Android and iOS platforms. Most of the applications uh, that we developed uh, were presented using uh, gamification techniques. For instance, uh, uh, one of the applications uh, allowed the timing of the street light to be controlled, uh, challenging the user to achieve a, a certain energy saving. Another application uh, did something similar but with the irrigation systems using a valve controlled uh, through the mobile application in one of the fountains of the park. In addition, uh, an intelligent pedestrian cr uh, crossing was installed to increase the luminosity of the street lights when a pedestrian uh, passed by. Uh, we installed also no noise sensors, uh, parking sensors, uh, and a screen showing, showing some real-time uh, uh, data of the different consumption levels in the city. Uh, and we consider that uh, the view of this initiative from the part of the citizens was really good and this kind of experiences uh, allow us to bring the, uh, the new IoT systems closer to the citizens uh, who understand better the uses, applications and the improvements that they can bring uh, to the quality of lives of the, of the, of the citizens. Okay? Okay, let me continue uh, sharing some of our uh, experiences uh, and let me talk a little, uh, um, um, a little bit about the, the Gijón Demo Lab. Um, in one of the laboratories of the university, we, we have implemented the Gijón Demo Lab. This laboratory was a, uh, or is a multi-purpose uh, space where research, uh, teaching, and technological dissemination activities are, are being uh, uh, carried out. Uh, the laboratory is equipped uh, with all necessary means, uh, servers, sensors, computers, uh, uh, IoT kits, among others, okay? But in the case that uh, we are dealing with, the most interesting aspect is the collaboration with companies. Uh, Gijón City Council has developed a protocol that uh, companies uh, must follow uh, to verify that uh, their technology is compatible with the city uh, Pan IoT network. To this end, in an initial stage, uh, the characteristics of the devices are checked against the functional requirements of the city IoT infrastructure, and then a simple connection test are carried out uh, on, on a network installed in the, in the laboratory. Okay? This network is, uh, of course, isolated from the, from the network of the city. Uh, the network that we have in the, the laboratory is kind of a sandbox that allows us to make all kinds of tests uh, without any risks. Uh, in the recent months, uh, a, a large number of companies have uh, carried, uh, developed a test in the laboratory and, and, and we're quite happy with, uh, with, with, with this, okay? So next uh, stage, something similar. And it, this is the, the second stage to demonstrate the compatibility of the a device with the city network uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, th this test is the connection to the demo lab environment installed in the technological park. Okay. Uh, this this uh, installation is very close to the to the university, and in this case, the IoT network will be based in Six Lopan, exactly the same that like the that, that the one existing in the university laboratory. But in this case, the devices can be tested for longer periods uh, of time and all, also in, in open air environment, so that the working conditions will be similar to those uh, they will have in their subsequent uh, real installation. Once this second uh, phase has been successfully completed, the system is considered to be compatible and ready to be integrated in the, into the real uh, city network. Here you can see the logos uh, of the companies that are making a test uh, of compatibility right now in the, in the laboratory, okay? Well, in all my previous slides, uh, and even when we mention other applications apart from lighting, like park, parking sensor, water, water control, noise measurements, and building monitoring, most of the time we talk about uh, uh, lighting. And most of the companies that uh, we made integration tests within the city IoT infrastructure were related to lighting also. Well, it makes sense since the nodes uh, are installed in the lighting points in the case of the of of the IoT infrastructure of Gijón. But uh, however, we all know that the, the applications of the IoT network that we will be deploying during the next years will be go will go very far beyond lighting. Okay, 
So in this regard, I would like to mention one of the projects that we are uh, that we will start very soon in collaboration with Redis. It's a local distribution utility from EDP Group, and also in collaboration with Lemur Research Group uh, and the City of Gijón. Um, from, from the university, we've been collaborating for several years with the utilities in order to develop uh, software for analysis and operate the, the network. And in the case of the terminal distribution network, the protocol used by smart meters, uh, the power line communication, this protocol is very convenient since it uses the electrical wires as a physical uh, layer for communication. But however, the bandwidth is not enough for collecting data and allow the real time operation of uh, monitoring of the network. Okay, So for that purpose, we're about to launch a pilot project in which we will send the data from the smart meters using the CISLO PAN network. We are, really really excited with the this project and i hope that uh, very soon we will be able to show some some results okay so what's what's next uh, well um, the city will soon uh, face the greatest uh, challenge in terms of uh, deployment of the iot network the local government uh, recently agreed uh, uh, to an investment of 125 million euros, an investment partially financed by the European Energy Efficiency Fund uh, for the deployment of more than 40,000 lighting points equipped with uh, IoT nodes using the six low pan protocol. Okay. Uh, this project will, uh, will make it possible to renew the entire lighting infrastructure of the city and provide six low pan coverage to practically the entire council of the home. This, uh, this project will be running for 15 years and the tender is scheduled uh, by the end of this year. Uh, without any doubt, uh, it is a challenge that we believe that we will make uh, Gijón a ben much, ben, uh, benchmark in the field of uh, smart cities. Um, from the University of Oviedo and in particular from the Gijón Smart Cities Chair, we are very proud of this collaboration. We honestly think that uh, this open model of collaboration is an example uh, of exploiting synergies between the academia, the public and the private initiatives. And from the university side, uh, I must remark that we are very happy to be part of it. So I think that the, this is everything from my, from, from my side. Uh, I would like to thank all attendees for, for your attention and, and the Smart Cities World for the invitation. You have in, the, in this slide the email of the Smart Cities Lab, Cathedra uh, Smart Cities at uh, uniovi.es. So let's keep in touch. Uh, we are open to whatever inquired, doubt or collaboration. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Pablo. Um, really, really interesting uh, presentations from both you and Gitano. Um, we have a bit of time for uh, some Q&A. We've had some uh, really interesting questions submitted already. Um, so to begin with, um, one of the attendees said um, about whether the city of Gijón and the university would consider working with other technologies, uh, non six low uh, pan. Pablo, what would be your thoughts on that? I believe you're still on mute there, Pablo. No, yes, no, it's, yeah, I can uh, hear you now. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we are not uh, just focused in, in one technology. Six Low Pan is a technology for, for this project, but we work with many other technologies in, in other projects like Modbus, uh, PLC, 4G. But uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the model of the city of Gijón is focused in Six Low Pan. Uh, we, we honestly think that it is, it is the best choice for, for, for this kind of uh, application and it's a uh, uh, already decided. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, another attendee has asked, uh, since implementing uh, Connector Giho, uh, have you noticed any change in perception of lights from customers? Uh, the likes of, say, less or more complaints about the quality of existing lights or LEDs, more curiosity and in light input, et cetera, et cetera.
Pablo, I'm sorry, did you get that question? Sorry? Did you hear that question? No, 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 no. I was... Oh, apologies. Uh, one of the attendees asked, since implementing Connect to Gihon, have you noticed any change in perception of the lighting system from customers, whether there's been um, less complaints or more complaints about the quality of existing lights or LEDs? I mean, you, you, you are asking about the, um, the, the, the pilot project that we, we made for showing the citizens uh, how the, the system works, right? Yes, that seems to be the question, yes. Yeah, so um, I mean, uh, the, the final purpose of uh, doing this is uh, just uh, to show the, 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 the citizens that the IoT network is something that it's al already working, um, to show a little, uh, a, a small capabilities of the, of the IoT network. Um, as, as you know, the city is going to make a huge investment uh, in, in, in this. So it is important that the citizens uh, understand why we do this and they understand the, the technology. Um, uh, related to that, I see another, another uh, question in the chat that I think that it's uh, why you are you, uh, spending 125 million euros, okay? Uh, I'm, I must emphasize that this investment uh, is an investment that is going to be done during the next 15 years, and it covers uh, not only the the technology, the, the technological uh, deployment, but also uh, the development of the platform and also the cost of the energy. Okay, so the cost of the energy is included uh, uh, there. I know that uh, uh, the cost of the technology is going to be much uh, much lower, but uh, I, I should emphasize that. Uh, Gaetano, I think this may be uh, a question more geared towards you. Uh, do you know of any other cities or regions in the European Union that are using Six Lopan technology? Uh, yes, for sure, because Six Lopan is a very diffused protocol for, uh, especially for smart city application. There are a, lo a lot of city around uh, the Europe, starting from from Italy, also France, uh, also United K, and uh, uh, many northern uh, uh, area uh, are using also Six Lopan uh, in including also Denmark, for example. Then there are a lot of projects spread from Europe in the Europe using a six lopan not only for testing, but in a really operative network. Okay, and um, another question more on the, the technical slide, I guess. Um, obviously, 5G is a big, big talking point uh, at the moment. And I was wondering your thoughts, Gitano, what... Yeah. What do you think its importance is going to be with Six Lopan uh, in terms of compatibility and how they're working together? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's not uh, one against the other because there is a large usage of Six Lopan and also 5G because 5G is more and more uh, deployed in the, in, the, um, in the Europe. There are uh, also around the world and uh, what we think is uh, there is a possibility to work together because in case you have an isolated node, for example, in a, in a, a, a very low concentration of node, consider a small village or a, a large area, 5G is really good because it's not necessary to use a network, but just connect it directly to the mobile operator. But the, the, the drawback is, a, is a, the, the fee, because for sure using 5G services is necessary to pay a fee for the network operator. But this fee also is changing depending on numbers and also depending on uh, how many devices you are using. Then I think it's complementary. There are no one against the other, but it's really complementary. And in most of the case, uh, some uh, gateway can use 5G to deliver data collected by a small network. 
uh, imagine a, like a park or, a, or, a, or a, also in this case, a small village, just one gateway collect a node using six lopan because it's uh, um, simple to connect the node without any, any 5G and also reduce the cost of the terminal and use 5G in the small gateway. But I think it's complementary. Um, really, uh, 5G is uh, necessary to be considered, but it's not one against the other. It's just complementary application, case by case, must be uh, selected. Um, Pablo I, from, I, oh, sorry, Pablo, please. Yeah, I, I would like to add to, to, to that that I totally agree with uh, Gaetan. I mean, uh, if you want to, to, to send um, for some specific application 4K video, yeah, probably you need 5G. But for, for receiving uh, the temperature each minute from a temperature sensor, I mean, using 5G, uh, it makes no, no sense at all. And, and we, we should consider that in the future we will have, we will have much more applications uh, similar to the temperature sensor like that the 4K video. So. Yeah, and also Pablo consider uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are using the same IP protocol and they, mm -hmm. for this reason also is really a good opportunity to be uh, interoperable between 5G mm -hmm. and the 6 lopan because transparently you can route data in one network or another network. Just to select yeah. the case by case, yeah. And uh, another attendee has asked about the issue of uh, data and confidentiality. Uh, how are you treating the data of the people who are participating in the Smart City project? And are there any regulations in place to uh, protect this data? Oh, in this case, I try to answer because protection, as I mentioned uh, during the presentation, is very important. Also, security and uh, encryption is really important. Uh, depends on which type of data, but in any case, it's necessary to avoid the uh, corruption of the data. And uh, inside the six lopan stack, there are all the possible uh, uh, mechanisms in order to protect the data and assure also um, um, isolation of the, of the data and in order to uh, assure that the nodes are connected to the right base station and to the trusted network. Then um, there are no specific regulation regarding how to treat the data because in this case are just uh, remote control data, are data uh, able to switch on, switch off lighting, but is also dangerous if uh, uh, there is an attack and uh, switch off, for example, imagine switch off the, the, the light of a, of a part of the city can be very dangerous for this reason encryption and protection is is really important it must be part of the of the protocol stack can be considered i don't know if i answer to the question but is do you have anything uh, you'd like to add uh, I see some other question regarding interoperability between MPV4 and MPV6. Uh, yes, it is, is possible. There are many, many cases. In fact, in, for example, in our network, we have uh, IPv6 on the on the mesh network side and IPv4 on the long range on the on the wide area network. Uh, most of the cases we are using a uh, uh, cellular connection from the from the no from the from the gateway up to the to the to, to, to the server and in this case we do a conversion from IPv6 to IPv4 but also in this case uh, using IP standard we are really uh, we, we have a good chance to to, to, to interconnect the different network also IPv6 and IPv4 and about uh, another question I see is related the power consumption of a routing node uh, this depends uh, really on uh, on um, how frequent is the communication. Considering uh, when you are not using high power, the the average uh, uh, power consumption is uh, around uh, uh, 30 uh, milliwatt. Uh, but this depends really on, on the application. It's just a number I give you just to give you an indication. But uh, a routing node for sure need more power than uh, end node for communicate. And uh, actually the best way is to use a, a full power node, uh, not powered by battery, but it's also possible by the protocol. Um, OK. 
Okay, and last, uh, uh, yes. Oh, sorry, please go no, ahead. No, no, no. Just the last word is related to interoperability because uh, I want to highlight that using standard means uh, that interoperability can be facilitated. Is a, mm, the problem is that there are partial interoperability at the moment on the market. There are many protocols, for example, um, I don't know, uh, Thread or uh, YSAN or also uh, ZigBee IP. But these protocols are just focused on the network level, but not at the application level. For this reason, we are participating to UCFI because um, really uh, UCFI, the, 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 the goal, the final goal of UCFI is to standardize all the levels, starting from physical level up to application level, in order to have a true, really interchangeable uh, devices with different vendors. Okay, and I think we have time for one last uh, question. Um, Pablo, someone asked about the uh, Six Lopan network in Gijon. Is it going to be open also for the general public? And are they going to be able to prototype their own Internet of Things projects uh, based on this network? Uh, I mean, it's going to be open for, for everyone. Uh, citizens, uh, companies, uh, the idea of the, of the government of the city is uh, that uh, in the same way that uh, they will provide uh, um, the roads, uh, uh, the, the light, the, the, the water, this kind of infrastructure, they will provide also uh, an IoT an IoT network. Of course, everyone that uh, is willing to deploy uh, whatever application, whatever uh, business uh, model uh, within the IoT uh, network, using the IoT uh, network, it should uh, pass some compatibility uh, te uh, test and some security test uh, before. But uh, yes, of course, it's going to be open for everyone. Excellent. Uh, we'll draw to a close there. Um, if you have any further questions, please email info at pdxeng.ch and uh, Paradox will be happy to answer as many as they can. We're going to be making a recording of the webinar uh, available on our website as well. Uh, you will be uh, notified after the, the fact. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for attending this afternoon. Really was a fascinating look at a incredibly important area within smart cities. And I'd like to thank uh, our speakers, Gaetano Calabro and Pablo Arbelea Arbelea for their time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.